Like many couples today, accountants Martin and Claire Williamson Carey are separated by the demands of work. He works near London. She's in Devon with their son Tom. They only see each other at weekends and it's not enough. So they're converting this derelict barn to build a new life together as a family. It's all change for the Williamson Careys. Project management, here, here we go. Not gonna do it, is it, eh? Me rushing around again like a headless chicken, but never mind. <laughs> this is Bratton Clavelli on the edge of Dartmoor. Beautiful, green, and far from the city. It's where the Williamson Careys want to spend the rest of their lives. Martin and Claire are giving up their high flying careers in finance in pursuit of the country life. But before they can sit back and enjoy the simple pleasures, they've got to turn a 200 year old barn into a family home. The barn is in the yard of a farm that belongs to Claire's parents. Now Claire, Martin and their six year old son are moving down to join the family. So this is it? Yeah. This is where we're going to have home, aren't we? It is. It's the barn. That's great, isn't it? A real characterful place. The barn is full of character. There's a wealth of old beams and fabulous stonework. It'll be interesting to see how much of its charm they manage to keep. Wow. Look at that. This is fantastic, isn't it? This great. Yeah. It's a it? huge space. Look at the ceiling room. What's this going to be? Well, this year, actually, Sally will be the bathroom, actually. The bathroom? Yes. <laughs> this, bathroom. yes. We, we like to bathroom. have a view in the bathroom. A room with a view? It'll be a room with a view. Well, well this, this here is going to be your bathroom window. window. That's right. Yes. What yes. about privacy? Well, I know the postman very well. <laughs> no, um, what we're actually going to do is the, the window is subdivided into sort of three sections. The big section in the middle will be one-way glass. Right. So we'll see out. They won't see in. They may see our feet at the bottom. But, Just um, have to make sure the builders put it in the right way around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The building consists of two barns in an L shape, with a lower section and an upper section. At the back, it's set into a bank, so it's quite dark inside. There'll be a small entrance hall in the lower barn, leading to two bedrooms. Off to the side in the upper barn, to get over the lack of light, there'll be a triple height dining hall with a grand staircase and galleried landing. Most of the living space will be on the upper floor, where there'll be a large open plan living room. At the far end, and with no direct access to the outside, will be the kitchen. It's a strange arrangement, but does take advantage of the light and views at this level. On the other side of the triple height hall is the bathroom with the big window and the master bedroom. It's a huge building, and the budget for the renovation is £270,000, which they got from selling their old house. The barn itself was a gift from Claire's parents, which is nice. If someone suggested to you 10 years ago that you might take your mum and dad's barn and move back next door to them, I mean, what would you have thought well, about that? we both went to university in Exeter, that's where we met, and we always said, I think as everybody does when you come somewhere like this, for oh, we'll come back, we'll come back. But I don't think we ever anticipated literally living in their back garden. I mean, <laughs> one doesn't plan that, does it? At the end of the day, you've got separate space, separate yeah. front doors, and there's a gap of at least eight feet at <laughs> the <laughs> narrowest point between, between <laughs> the two buildings. So, so that's a safe margin of error. <laughs> One of Claire's reasons for wanting the country life is to have space for her beloved horses. I adore them, and I can't pretend I don't like... It, it's an amazing, when you've had a horse for a while, there's a really nice relationship you get with them. And yeah. I don't know, they are little, you know, personalities all of their own. They've all got their own quirks. This is like your extended family, isn't it? Yeah. I mean... Well, this one I've had longer than my husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the other little man in my life. Martin is on his way back to Slough for the week, where he works as a finance director for Sendant, a big American multinational. He's working out his notice before taking a six-month break to run the building project back in Devon. Claire and their son Tom have already been on site for a year, staying in Claire's parents' house while working on the plans. The architect took nearly nine months, the whole procedure. Um, and there was no point, as both 
living down here and waiting for that part of it to happen. Um, so the decision was that I'd come down and then Martin would follow when the barn project was at a sort of ready to go stage. In Martin's absence, Claire has completed all the preparation and planning and now the project is ready to go. I don't think it's being organised because I'm an accountant particularly, but I think with this it's so important that it is right. You know, planning is all. We've got it down to literally how we'll finish the stonework and how many coats of sand renders there should be and all of this sort of stuff. That allows me to monitor what's going on as a non-technical person. The first job for the builders is to rip the roof off the upper barn. Once it's been rebuilt, the interior will be completely stripped out and replaced with a totally new layout. That's walls, floors, plumbing, heating and electrics. In fact, everything. And the man in charge is veteran Devon builder, Alan Jeffries. Yeah, I like old buildings to work on, best of all. Yeah, this is a nice old building, something you get stuck into. As the first week of building ends, Martin goes into battle with the Friday night rush hour for his 200-mile drive home. It's a long, gruelling journey, but I know that um, it's only for the short term. It can be incredibly depressing if, if, if I knew I had to do it on every Friday from, on 52 weeks of the year for uh, uh, this year, next year and the year after. But, uh, but, but it's only short term. Although, although it's been a year. Five hours later, approaching midnight, he arrives home for the weekend. But soon the commuting will be over. Martin will be home for good, and his new life will finally begin. Martin and Claire are building a new life in Devon. After a year's planning, Claire is overseeing the conversion of their 200-year-old barn. It really feels like it's happening now when roofs are coming off. I think it's really great. <laughs> Martin has resigned from his job and is finishing his last week at work in Slough. The roof of the upper barn is nearly off, so the builders move on to the floor of the lower one. They're putting in a new concrete base for an underfloor heating system. But there's one small snag for builder Alan. Once you're there, just shoot it there, just get a file here, and then just at least you push it, you know, yeah. push it around there, can we? The chute on the lorry isn't long enough to reach, and the concrete can only stay in the mixer for a short time before it sets. So all 14 tons have to be barrelled in. That's a lot of barrels. Job done, thanks to a great bit of teamwork. 200 miles further east, just outside Slough, it's the end of Martin's last day at work. His plan is to take six months off to project manage the conversion before finding a new job in Devon. Leaving behind the um, nine to five corporate life, and it's not just a nine to five life, it's an earlier to a later life. It's uh, leaving behind uh, something that's, it's an environment in which I feel quite comfortable. And that's not the only comfortable thing he's leaving behind. It's goodbye to his company car, a spanking new Mercedes C230 SE estate with full leather interior. Let's go on, hand the keys back to that. I've said no, I don't, I don't want this anymore, take it back. And it's hello to his very own middle of the road V-Reg Vauxhall saloon with sensible cloth seats. Reliable saloon, it's cheap to buy, cheap to run. And, um, it's a very underrated car, which is what I keep telling myself. With that, Martin leaves his old life and heads for the country. It's possible to spend your whole life or your whole career wishing you were doing something else, but uh, it's only when you pass that point of no return and all of a sudden a whole number of things happen which means it is very difficult to return to where you were. 
leaving present for my work colleagues this afternoon. I've got a, a clipboard and, and a hard hat, so uh, so it's uh, project management. Here, here we go. It's Martin and Claire's first week at home together. Martin had planned to become project manager, but Claire seems to have made all the decisions already. This is the sort of thing we're talking about here. Um, I don't obviously need the, the cot at the end of the bed anymore, but it's a, it's a comfortable, paying lip service to barn, but at the same time it's a decent sized bed and, and all the sort of things you want around it. Yes, and there's also an opportunity to go quite modern with some of the, the bathroom fittings, because we've gone for... for no, for, no we haven't. Have we? <laughs> I'm sure we have. <laughs> no. Claire is very particular about her plans. Well, I think it's just a case of if I see it exactly as I want it in a magazine, I almost immediately wouldn't want it because we want to do our own thing. Um, so when one's looking at these magazines, it's more a case of there's this little bit there that's quite nice or that little bit. But I don't think I'd really want to see my entire ideas in a magazine. You know, then they would have to change, I think. It will be interesting to see just how her ideas come together. To find a gargoyle. You may have wondered. I married a gargoyle, yes, that's true. Stick your head on the end of the bed, thanks. It seems Claire's gargoyle has arrived too late to get involved. As the others press on with the conversion, he has to set new goals. One thing I'm looking to do is to uh, lose a bit of weight through a programme of more sensible eating and regular exercise. And that programme probably starts today, I would have thought. The problem with where I worked is that uh, I spent the last two or three years sitting within within uh, about 15 yards range, certainly within, within eye level, of uh, a crisp and chocolate machine. And then as the day goes on, they just say, eat me, eat me. But uh, it's been a strange week. Uh, the weather's been good. It's the last week of the school holidays, so plenty of family stuff to do. But. Uh, I think tomorrow it'll really, really hit me when, when Tom's back at school and uh, Claire's at work, so I'll be uh, touring around the house on my own. Martin may be struggling to keep occupied, but it's full steam ahead for everyone else. The roof of the upper barn is nearly complete, so Alan starts on the roof of the lower barn. Claire wants a lighter, more modern structure, supported by giant steel beams. So it's curtains for the 200-year-old timbers. Got this concrete pad for the uh, chimney breast to sit on, which is then going to go on up to carry the steel uh, purlings for the new roof. Managed to get the insulation on the on the higher barn on the roof there, which has kept it sort of reasonably dry. These 18th-century barns are being given a 21st-century rebuild. The builders are using an ultra-thin layer of plastic foil to insulate the roof. It's the latest in insulation technology. This is the, only the old stuff here, which came out of up there, but that's... Actually, yeah. though, that's, that's quite interesting, because this... Yeah. That, that's what was on the roof before. That's yes, right. And that's... Yes. Well, that's not eight inches. That's no, no, but it'd be... Five, six inches Yeah, it'd be thick, twi twice as thick as that. Quilt insulation yeah. packed out, which is what most people imagine they've got on their houses, don't that's they? That's right, yeah. But then the new stuff... Yeah. Which is this. This is magic, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. That... Thickness of insulation is replaced by this thin little sheet now. That's right. And the other advantage to this is it's easier to lay, surely. Oh, yeah. It's a lot quicker and easier to lay. But it's not all new technology. The fireplace at the centre of the living room needs a piece of good old-fashioned Devon granite for the lintel. But even though Martin has plenty of spare time, it's Alan who's sent to find it. Oh, she said, you know, if, if I could find something that... Uh, a nice piece of granite, you know, something that looked a bit weathered, you know, rather than a new piece, so... And it's not long before he finds it. It's actually... Yeah. It's I... actually six foot, there, from, totally from, from each end, from point to point. Yeah. Well, that'll be OK, I think. I mean, what sort of uh, 250. money is... 250. Yeah. Back at the barn, the project manager gives her verdict. That's really good. Someone told me it's covered in moss. Somebody's been working at it. I well, out of the field, yeah. No, that's really good. Must have kinged it up. Yeah, yeah. Be But Alan's not the only one to have made a purchase. So has Martin. 
one he's rather proud of. They have wonderful things in this part of the world called uh, farmer's supply shops where you sort of uh, wander in and you can buy everything from wellies to spare parts for your tractor and stuff like that. So uh, um, this is one of these things when you choose your own broom and you choose your own broom handle and, uh, and you choose this m magic clip on the end and you bring it home and you assemble it and uh, you've got a broom that will that's fit, fit for the job really. It's a big adjustment after the cut and thrust of high finance. Claire's broom. Claire's one was a, a, a DIY uh, economy broom, and it was it was narrow and it was thin and it and it wore down quickly and the handle buckled and everything else. This one will be will be looking like that in in ten years time. It'll have three new heads and two new handles, but it'll be my my favourite trusty broom. Look at that, it's engineered for a quality job. It seems country life isn't quite what Martin expected. I, I now need about two, two hours break between between each su successive task. I'll, I'll make a phone call and then I and then, then, then I'll have and then I go and boil the kettle again and wander around and put some washing on and uh, and then think about timetabling the next phone call rather than just uh, rather than just getting up and doing it. For Claire, it's the opposite. She's got the building, a part-time job, and she's taken up an old hobby. There we go. It started, I was about, I think I was about 16, and somebody gave me a buzzard. And I must have spent 15 years with him. And now we're settled here, I can get back to it. So, And next year, I've already put my order in for one of these chaps. We'll be getting on with it. She's also got a new hobby, and is still devoting three hours a day to her horses. And this one, being a good horse, will get caught up, she says, setting herself up for a fall here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Whirly. <laughs> look, at silly, look at her face up there now, though. Oh, whoops. Oh, that was not something sensible to do, <laughs> says Bailey. <laughs> Bailey will learn, won't she? Six weeks into the project, work reaches a crucial stage. The crane! The slates are going on the roof of the upper barn. In the lower barn, the heavy steels for the roof are ready to go uh, in. Good weather has arrived just in time, yeah. unlike the crane. I'm just waiting for a call from the driver. OK, because I'm going to get, you know, like 20 minutes, half an hour, I'm going to have a crisis of um, right. needing to get the horses in. No, no, nothing else. Okay. I'm just going to get the horses in. So can we make sure he doesn't pitch up? Yeah. Without, because yeah, no I don't fancy horse versus crane. No, I don't go together, does it? Not really? No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not unless you fancy a few burgers. Right, no. <laughs> While we wait, Claire gives me a quick tour. This is massive. Oh, this do you think a, so? Yeah, this oh, is right, because I'm having a crisis that I think it's smaller than I realised. <laughs> but sometimes I'm fooled like that. I mean, I look at this and you said it looked big and I think it looks small. I don't know. I just thought it was slightly longer. Believe me, maybe. this is a big kitchen. Is it? OK, mm. I'll take your word for that. If I don't like it, it'll be your problem. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that will be large enough is the triple height dining hall in the corner of the upper barn. And I see just there is where you're going to have your big skylight. That's the um, hole in the roof, yeah. That's huge, isn't it? Yeah, and it's even better when that lining's come off it. Yeah. Um, no, it, re it works really nicely. It's it massive. Down. So on this line where this truss is, from here back to that wall, you're going to take all of that floor yes. out, isn't it? Yes, yes. So where I'm standing now... Will be a hole. I'll be floating in you a will. triple height space with a huge skylight over the yep. top. Brilliant. I love Hopefully. it. I do love it. I really yes. But the progress generally seems to be going quite well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they seem to be on schedule and according to their little list. And, and you've got the roofers oh, wow. flying. Hey, wow, I didn't realise that was going on. Snap. Gosh, it's really good. That is quick, Tyler, isn't it? Gosh, it does go on fast. I didn't realise it went on that quick. I shall have to get my instructions out now and see what it says about the tiling, won't I? You know, one and a half overlap or whatever, I go and check. You know, X amount of overlap and all this. And <laughs> what sort of nails are they using? Yes, I know, I should be up there. It says on the packet. But is, that, is that quite an important rule for you, that you make sure that everything is absolutely checked and done to the way you want it? If it says on the roof there should be a one and a half overlap, there's a reason for that, so, you know, just quietly we'll have a check. You know. I'm sure there is, and you know, um, there's no. So far, there hasn't been anything that hasn't been done right. Martin is now totally detached from work on the barn. This six-month break is looking a little less attractive. Probably four weeks into it now, and um, the first week's great. The second week's great. The third week, you sort of the afternoons begin to drag a bit, 
then you think that uh, thinking about what more you can do with with your time and what alternatives there are. At the moment, it's, it hasn't become a problem. Another three months, six months, nine months, it could be a big problem. Back on site, the crane arrives and the heavy beams can be lifted into place. It's a delicate and skillful process. One false move and a whole wall could come crashing down. The beams are in, and it's full steam ahead, as usual. Within a matter of days, the new roof is complete. This building hasn't looked this good for a hundred years. Inside, it's a different story. All the joists in the lower barn have to come out. And new walls have to be built. There's even a job for Martin. He's away. He's away. My job at the moment is burning all the wood. I have a sort of an entire morning when I have this sort of November the 5th style bonfire. <coughs> Not going to do it, is it, today? It's November in Bratton Clavelli. Just eight weeks into his six month break, Martin's rejoining the rat race early. A job has come up working for a drinks company 60 miles away in Torquay. It's still a hefty commute, but at least he'll be back at home with his family every night. I don't believe I'm running away. I'm better at structured life. I'm better at being told what to do, where I have to be. It's that final piece of the jigsaw that means that uh, the house is coming into shape and uh, and we're we're now financially secure for uh, for uh, the foreseeable future. Claire seems in two minds about Martin's change of life. I think he's ready to go back. He's he seems quite fired up by it. So yeah, he's brilliant for him. He's me rushing around again like a headless chicken, but never mind. <laughs> Things are moving on for the Williamson Carey's new life in Devon. Martin is commuting again, five months earlier than planned, but his job is much nearer home. Claire and Alan the Builder are cracking on with converting the 200-year-old barns into a modern family home. The internal structure is almost complete in the lower barn, so attention moves to the upper barn. With the roof complete, the walls and rotten floors can be removed to create the barn's triple height dining hall. That's right. That's right. Come on, let's go and take a look. Scushy. I'm looking forward to seeing this actually, because this will be the the drama in the space. Well, this is the thing that could be great or could just be a pretentious folly, so we'll have to see when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so all of this, all the joists, all the boards, everything are gonna come out. Yes, it comes out to about all of it, about to about here. I feel like I'm in a cathedral. It's like waiting for the light to appear from above. It's like, oh. Moment of revelation. This one's coming up. Whew. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> oh. It's fantastic, isn't it? At last, you can begin to see what Claire has in mind. There's no doubt it'll be a lovely space, but elsewhere in the house, I think the layout is very strange. Now this opening would make a fantastic entrance to this house, but it's an ensuite bathroom window. Now this is the kitchen, and out there on the ground floor is the car park. 
I wouldn't like to be the one to carry my shopping from the car park, into the entrance hall, through the dining room, up the staircase, along the gallery, through the lounge, to get here. It's just not going to work. It's not my problem, but it will be Claire's. So just talk me through how you came up with the arrangement that you did. I spent nearly a year trudging through the barn and getting the feel of it and thinking about movement flow and how would we do this and where would we go if the doorbell rang kind of things, you know. Mm. Uh, and so by the time we actually put that on paper and we learnt to live with it, it really was the right decision. That's interesting because you spent that much time at the beginning. You feel like you're convinced that it's right. Because I, always, I do always find with all buildings you think... Is it just speaking to me differently now? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Once you yeah, reveal things. So far, we haven't had that. I mean, you know, we've still got a few months to go, so it may change. But walking through there, I think, gosh, that's going to be lovely to live in. That's the obvious place for our bedroom. Having opened this up today, this is absolutely great, and I wouldn't swap this for the world now. Um, so in a way, it's kind of defined. What Claire wants, Claire seems to get. But it's all at a cost to the character of the barn. I love all the stonework in here, but how much of this is you keeping exposed? Uh, only that piece there, as we go through, you know, there's well, a, here. the landing, yeah, where we go through into next door. Right. Just keeping that area there, and obviously below as well, down below in the living area. And but what about side. all this? What about on all these sides? No, here? that's all being plastered there. Really? Yeah. Just covering it up? Covering it up, yeah, yeah. That's I a think bit of a shame, I think. If they're not careful, all the character will be lost under acres of plaster. And that's not all. This is the one she's having in the bedroom, on the ceiling. Oh, my God. Yeah. I thought she was just doing white everywhere. I thought she was keeping no, it simple. No, no, we're, we're just, you know, there you go. Oh! God, yeah. I didn't expect that. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well... <laughs> I think... Come on, Alan, <laughs> honest opinion. What do well, you think of it? When I first saw it, I thought, oh, my God, you know, like, you, like, you know, but when I think, when you see, when, when you get the walls, Done with the, with the Roman white, I think it might look OK. Well, she's certainly been bald, I'll give her that. Yeah, <laughs> she is. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to wake up in the morning and look at that. Uh, there you go. <laughs> the upside of Claire's decisive approach is the project keeps on rolling, on time and under budget. The downside is the wrecking continues. Almost every original feature has gone, including these pillars that didn't fit in with Claire's plan. That didn't take long. What we're going to do is clean it up now. The upper barn is now a shell, so in go the new floors and walls for the master bedroom and ensuite bathroom. As the transformation continues, the barn nears completion. Martin takes a rare day off from his new job to help Claire choose the last of the bathroom fittings. That comes in two sizes. That's either the size we get or it's a smaller size. Do you so want to get it? No, of course I don't. I would try a sofa out there sitting on it. Would you mind bath without, without getting in it? How do you know what I got up to last time I came here? Now, come on then. Come on. Be sensible. He's very good about letting me have my own way with these sort of things, unless it's something very dramatic that he doesn't like. So, um, you know, I mean, if I ask for something odd, he might challenge it, but mm. as long as I'm not doing anything too stupid, he's pretty good at letting me have my own way. Okay, well, if we look at the sort of the, the loo and the basin, we want a reasonably contemporary, but not too stylized. Plain don't we? but funky. Yeah, should we have a look for a plain but funky toilet? Too funky. Too funky. Too curly. I don't, don't like that. My only thought on the loo, well, the loo was because we've got to have a, a back to the wall. What, what was that? Do mean one that hangs on the wall? Yeah. The wall hang one? Yeah, where the cistern's inside a, a box. Inside. And why is that? Because that's the way I've designed it. <laughs> <laughs> back at the barn, Alan's team is unstoppable. I've rarely seen the project go as smoothly. By January, they're 20 weeks in, and it's time to fit the windows and make the building watertight. Claire's allowed Alan to beef up the size of the window frames and use thick slate sills. It's a much improved look and fits in better with the character of the building. 
But as the old frames come out, the building shows its age. I think over the years, uh, the, this, this bit of buttress is it, just sunk, so it's just like it's dropped out and split up through the middle behind the, the old existing frame. So uh, the middle of the wall's full of rubble, which is quite right. loose, and it's, it's all fallen out. So just got rid of most of it and then just throw loads of uh, mortar in there just to key it all up together again. Should be fine then. Nothing stops Alan even when the enormous oak frame for the bathroom window comes up on the snug side of tight. Hammer. Now this house has really moved on. All the windows are in and they look like they've been beautifully made. It's starting to look like it's a real house. Hello, Claire. How are How you? Are you? I'm not so bad. Bit wet well. today. That's nice the only to thing. See you. Mm, take care. It's a grim day, isn't it? Oh, it's disgusting. Never mind. <laughs> so I suppose it's January. What do you expect? But this is moving on, isn't it? It is since you saw it last. Certainly, yes. I mean, so I see it down there. But yes, the windows are in, which I'm really pleased about. And so. they look beautiful. Yeah. They look fantastic. Well, it's wonderful because you see it on a drawing. Yes, it's a window. But when it's in there, you think, gosh, she got that right, didn't she? <laughs> and the outside's yeah, just looking stunning. I mean, where they've made good all the old stonework around they've the openings. They've done a stunning job they've of that, haven't they? Such a beautiful job. I, know. I mean, <laughs> even up at that window there, when that when that starts to weather yes. around oh, that yes. window, you'll think you think it's been there for two hundred years. They're beautiful. Paul, the guy who does it, is so talented. He really is. And I mean, every one they've done, because I thought, oh, new brick, mm, you know. But actually, it's really, really beautiful work. Sadly, that's about the only stonework left. Inside, it's all but disappeared. Just one wall remains unplastered. And do you think you've kept enough of that old stonework exposed? I do. I, I really do, because I think even now, even when the walls are sort of smooth off and grey, it would be quite intimidating, I think, stone all the way around. Because if you think about this, it's quite dark, and it would have been if it stayed a stone. I think it would have been intimidating. Whereas the white walls will lift it, and then that will actually be a real feature wall. So the bathroom? Yes. The only time you'll get invited into my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm privileged. You are. Privileged to be invited Notice into in the bathroom. in your diary is a big moment in your life. This Basically. has moved on. This has. has really moved they on. They have. They've worked hard in here, actually. Now, the big issue in this room is all this glass. My window. It? And I was always thinking, privacy, privacy, standing here in your bathroom and having people wandering about yep. outside. But I mean, it's, it's a beautifully made window. Yeah, it's beautifully crafted, all out of that oak. Fantastically made. Yeah. But what are you going to do to get over the privacy? Well, we've got a privacy film on the windows. Right. So it, during the day, you can't see in. You've got a mirrored effect on the outside. Right. And at night, we'll have a, something across the window to, to pull it across. Do you think it might be worth just having less glass? No. <laughs> <laughs> Next about question. That, aren't you? <laughs> Elsewhere, she's not so sure. The living room is causing a bit of a headache. Because we were agonising a bit over the space because it's actually quite a difficult space to f put furniture into because you've got two windows there and you've got the fireplace behind you. The logical place for, let's face it, the television is in that corner. Mm. And we're not the sort of family who pretend we don't do television and therefore, you know, hide away. We do and therefore we want it on view. Yeah. Um, so as, as a result, if we put a sofa facing that way, we block off the fireplace. If we have it placed in this way, we've all got to swivel around to watch the television, which we won't do. Yeah. So and we've been having also, lots of fun playing with furniture up here. Yeah, you've got to circulate from that door past whatever furniture put in to get through to the kitchen. Yes. And maybe even circulate that way sometimes if you want to. So lots of windows, lots of circulation mm. routes, and not that many walls. No, so we've had lots of fun in here. <laughs> it's a problem she'll have to resolve, but at least it's not holding anything up. As usual, work just keeps spinning along. And Al's been a fantastic builder, hasn't he? I mean, he's really, he's helped you a lot and taken control oh, of so yes. many of the decisions. Yes, I don't pretend technically I have a lot of experience at all in these things, you know. <laughs> and, and I've had to rely on him and, and you know, we, we've worked it through like that. And every time it's been bang on, which is incredible, really. But it's not just Alan pushing the building forward. Projects like this need a flow of decisions from the client. Whilst Claire's decisions may not always be right, she does at least make them. Um. It would be nice if we could hide this one, box yes. in, by making a false wall in front of it, rather than just boxing it in square. Yeah. We could sort of go straight across, 
so we didn't see it at all. The only slight concern I would have, this wall would be forward and that one would be back with the bar with the cistern in it, wouldn't it? You'd have a visual kind of imbalance. Oh, I see. Because the shower's set back a little bit, isn't it? The yeah. The set back from the face yeah. of the wall. OK, well, you know, it's only a, it's only a thought, really. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, I, yeah. I would. If I had yeah. more space, I'd say, yeah, absolutely. It'd be much nicer yeah. just to get rid of the wretched thing. Because what we're saying, essentially, is my wall would go back to just there, isn't it? Mm. She has listened to some things, like, say, the, sill, the window sills, and she did take that on board, and she did, and I say to me the other day, well, that is, you know, thanks for that, because that was, you know, now you see it, you know. But then, like, on other things, she really, like, sticks her heels in and says, no, that is my decision, that's how I want it. Boxing. Don't we have to make the decision. Box it. The last task before the floor goes down is the heating system. Hundreds of metres of pipes will carry hot water under all the floors. Downstairs, they're covered by tonnes of screed. That spreads the heat out across the floor. Each room is heated separately by its own circuit. It's quite expensive to fit, but over time it's more economical than a normal heating system. Once dry, the floor will be covered in slate. Claire wants six different colours on the ground floor alone. The only thing left to do is choose them. And with the ever-decisive Claire, this shouldn't take long. So what is it you're after? Um, we want a blackish slate, um, lightly riven for the hallway. Something in green, I think, for the cloakroom, because the cloakroom bowl is green, so yeah. something green for the cloakroom. We need something pretty robust for Tom's room yeah. um, and something for the study as well. This is amazing stuff, beautiful. Well, there's your green. That's beautiful, isn't it? And is that the size that you'd go for as well? Well, I'd go for mixed sizes. I'd go for the completely mixed, from the little 30-30s right up to the 60-40s, isn't it? Yeah. Because the rooms are quite big, so I can do that. Brilliant. And if the two's, they're too small, it's going to have a sort of nasty checkerboard effect. Yes. So I'd go for the whole range Fantastic. in the room, I think. Well, See, we've had some green. <laughs> yeah, we found that. Let's go home now. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, this is more like it. Look, for which is, room? This is for can you the get study, it? yeah. Sure enough, in less than an hour, Claire's chosen the lot. Some people would have taken weeks. Excuse me, do you have any idea where the Raja comes from? India. <laughs> OK, but it could have just been a name. Well, it could have been. It could have been, you know. Best guess. And now all I have to do is find Tom's bedroom. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Actually, this has got nearly every colour in it as well. I think so, it looks good in this room. Yeah, brilliant. that's brilliant. Just find out the name now. Yeah, and how much it costs. <laughs> As usual, there's a rare dedication from everyone on this project. They, they're buying the floor, but it's always been my floor. They're all my floors. Yeah, you know, I've, I've put a bit of me in. Whilst it slates downstairs, upstairs it's something different. All the upstairs is oak floorboarding. Wide boards, narrow boards? Um, 160 to 180 mil. Oh, that's wide. That's good. Nice wide boards. But it's about as wide as you can go for the underfloor heating, you see. Yeah, exactly, before you get too much movement. Alan's final flourish is the staircase. Solid oak and oozing character. Perfect for a grand dining hall. I think that room has worked, because I, I expressed some nervousness previously about that room being pretentious and a bit pointless. Um, but I think actually it's coming down in scale and it's going to look OK. And it'll fit with the furniture I've already got, which is kind of important as well. Claire's chosen a lot of very different materials and fittings for this house, some of which I love. The trick will be to blend them together into the perfect home. It'll be interesting to see if she pulls it off. Nine months ago, Claire and Martin began renovating these barns in Devon. They wanted a comfortable home for their family to settle down in for good. It seems like only yesterday this was a dark, damp, derelict ruin. Well, this is the fun bit, to see just what this barn is eventually going to look like and, and see whether Martin and Claire have, have got what they really, really wanted.
Hello, Georgia. how are you? Good to see good you. To see come you. Come in, well. come in. Hi. Okay, how are you? Again. I'm fine, you? Very good, very good. good. Come on so, in. Is it all finished? No, not almost, quite. Almost, almost. One or two finishing touches, but uh, yeah, as you can see, we're pretty much there. And what a job they've done. From this to this. Incredible space. It's an extraordinary room. Natural light floods right down into the space, and the oak staircase is magnificent. Although I'm not sure this fireplace is a fitting replacement for the original pillars. But at least one piece of character has survived, and it's fabulous. Huge stone wall that you've kept and preserved and restored. Yeah. It really gives you a sense of this triple height space, doesn't it? That's right. Now your budget for this place was around two hundred and seventy thousand mm pounds. -hmm. Was it completed on budget? Oh, it's completed under budget. Under budget. Under yeah. budget. Yes. Hang on a minute. This is unheard of, isn't it? It's finished under budget, and you still had your contingency left. It was run by an accountant. Yes. <laughs> that financial background. I suppose you'd expect it to be under budget, wouldn't you? But the savings aren't obvious. Upstairs, the luxurious wide oak boards contrast with the white rendered walls. It's a bright and modern look, particularly in the living room. Although it has been at the expense of the charm of the ancient beams and stone walls. Because lots of people say to us, oh, you should leave the original A-frames in and all this, and I said, oh, come on. You'd have been, that would have been the height of the ceiling every well, eight of them, you'd have mm. to duck under all of them, and you just could not have lived in it. Claire's other problem here was the furniture layout. Her solution is an L-shaped sofa, set with its back to the fire. So you'll have a TV on that wall in the corner. And a cabinet that's and a it. bookshelf and all the usual stuff one has in a room. But, um, and also, I wanted to keep the corridor, because I couldn't see us weaving through furniture every time we wanted to go to a kitchen or anything like that. Further along, Claire's reused an old central island, and a fridge unit from her last kitchen. On the far wall, there's a new run of units with a cool granite worktop and lovely views. A great place to peel your spuds and it makes up for the distance you have to carry them from the car. At the other end, this dilapidated ruin is now the bedroom. The ceiling is still red, very red, but overall, it's a nice room. And this window really makes all the, the new difference. Windows, yes. And you had the two small ones on that side and we had this one not through and you can see dot all across in the distance. In the ensuite, there's a change of mood with a 1920s feel. But it's a big room for a bathroom. The boxing around the soil pipe isn't quite as bad as I thought, but the window is still a problem. The one-way glass just about works but there's simply too much of it. I'm not completely convinced, but, you know. <laughs> you know. Keep it under advisement, don't oh, you? <laughs> yeah, oh, well, oh, well, I'll just let that one go, I think. This is not an elegant and sympathetic conversion of an agricultural building. But Claire has produced a light, spacious, and surprisingly colourful home. It's a city house transported into the country. That said, it's what she wanted and it's having the desired effect on their lives. Claire, what do you think you've got out of this? Well, for me, the ideal home. Um, my horse is on tap, of course, and my family on tap as well. So, um, the very best I can hope for, I think. What do you think that you've got out of this, Martin? Got uh, what I'm looking for as well, in terms of uh, a nice space to live in, a, a lot more time with my family, rather than just a work, work, work. You kind of really took she took control of the entire project, didn't she? Really drove it and, and saw it through. Right, she was here right. every single day with the builders and, and working incredibly hard. That's right. Did you feel like you were being left out a little bit? Not at all. I still con still co consulted on, uh, on, on a number of decisions. In terms came, of I think it used to come around the evenings. I used to drag you around saying, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. Do you want this or this? In yeah, exactly. I did, didn't I? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is this the house that you always wanted? I certainly yeah. We won't move from here except in little wooden boxes. So you're going to stay here for the rest of your lives? Yeah. How bad would that be? 
Ah, <risos> I do still have reservations about certain aspects of this house, but Claire's single-minded determination and absolute control of this project means she's managed to get exactly what she wanted, and she's done it on time and under budget. Claire and Martin now have a home where the whole family can put down roots and live for the rest of their lives. Next week, Martin and Rebecca take on a 70s church to make their first home together. Nobody ever makes a deadline, but uh, I want to get mine done on time. I've put all eyes in one basket. If this goes wrong, then we are destroyed, basically.